Welcome to Bruce Tracy Photography. Today I'm going to show you how to take the best moon photograph you have ever taken and I'm going to make it as simple as I can. Now for this all you're going to need is a tripod, a camera, the longest lens that you've got, and Photoshop. That's it. I'm going to show you everything you need just using those tools. Come along with me. We're about to take the best moon photograph you've ever taken. Okay, most of this video will be done actually processing the photo, but I wanted to show you real quick what I am using. First thing you're going to need if you're going to take moon photos is a really solid tripod. This thing is rock solid. Then on top of it, I am shooting with the Canon EOS R, and this is the Canon RF 600mm f11. It's going to get me right up close to the, the moon, and then you need to have a timer or a clicker so that... I don't have to touch the camera. I don't want any movement in that camera whatsoever. In fact, you want to make sure that your camera is set on electric shutter mode. That way you don't have the shutter going up and down. That's going to you know, cause any kind of movement as well. So that's going to give you the best image without any kind of motion in it. Let's go ahead and take this outside and shoot the moon. Well, there's our super moon coming up over the mountain range. It's going to be so incredible tonight. So we're going to wait till it gets way high in the sky, clear of all that atmosphere. And then we're going to photograph that. But what a super moon we got going on out there tonight. Okay, we got a live view of the moon going on right now. This is looking through the back of my Canon R7 with the Canon RF 600 millimeter lens, which means the focal length here is the equivalent of 900 millimeters. So you get a feel for how much of the back of the screen gets filled up with the moon. So let me brighten that up a bit, see if we can... Yeah, it brings up a little bit more of the, the brightness. What we're going to do tonight is take about 30 to 40 pictures right here. Then take them inside and stack them and pull out a little bit of the color. So let's go ahead and take those photos. Okay, let's get started. What you want to do first is you're going to take the images you just shot outside. Uh, in this case, I believe I have 21 of them. Let's take a look. I do have 21. Select all of those images. So go ahead and highlight all of those. I'm going to drag to the end, shift, enter on the, on the mouse. And now I've selected all of these images. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to go photo, edit in, and I'm going to put open layers in Photoshop. So this is going to take these 21 images, take them over to Photoshop, and open them up there. Much, much, much later. Okay, all the images have now been imported as layers over here in Photoshop. You can see them over here on the right side of the screen. What I need to do now is to line up all those images so that the moon is lined up evenly throughout. So I'm going to take this, click on the top one, hit shift, go to the bottom, click there, and now you'll see I've selected all of the layers. The next step, I'm going to come up over here to edit, right down here to where it says align layers, select that. I'm going to go with auto here click OK. This is going to probably take a few minutes because I have 21 photos here. So we're going to let it go ahead and stack and then I will come back when it's done. Alright, we are back. Uh, that took about 10 minutes for that to go ahead and align the photos. So now what happens is all of these photos, all 21 of them have been aligned so they're all right on top of each other on the screen. Stacking comes next. Alright, so now that we've got all of these aligned, we're going to come up here to layer Come on down here to where it says Smart Objects. From Smart Objects, you're going to come down here and we're going to uh, select Convert to a Smart Object. That's going to take all of these layers and put them into one smart object. And that's going to take another four or five minutes. So we're going to let the computer go ahead and run that process and then I will be back with you again once it's done that. Okay, we're back, and now what we have done is we have aligned the layers. Now I've merged them all into a smart object. We have one last phase here before we, we're done with this process, and what we're going to do now is we're going to actually stack these little images together. What the stacking does is it's going to reduce the amount of noise in your photograph, and it's also going to increase the detail. So that's why taking these photos, stacking them all together, it's a worthwhile process because it's just going to make for so much of a cleaner photograph. So now we're going to do the same thing, go up here to Layer, come down here to Smart Objects, and from here we're going to go down to Stack Modes. So now we're stacking it. And I'm going to go ahead and select Median as my stack method. I'm going to click that. This again is going to take a while. This process takes quite a bit if you've got an older computer like I do. 
and if you have a lot of images. So it's going to take it probably another five to ten minutes for it to go ahead and stack all of these images. We'll be back again once it's done that. And we are back and we have just finished the stacking process. So what we've done is we've aligned the photographs, we merged them into a smart object, and now we have stacked them. And here is what we've got. It is a beautiful moon. Now what I want to do is I want to bring out some of the color of the minerals in the moon itself. So I'll show you how to do that. Come up here to Image, Adjustments, I'm going to go to Vibrance. Now you're going to take your saturation and drag it up to about 15. Take vi uh, the Vibrance and bring that up about 10. That's good enough. And I'm going to do that with the saturation a few times here. So I'm going to go Adjustments, Vibrance, bring up the saturation 15. I'll probably do that eight or nine times. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. All right, instead of walking you through the process of doing that eight or nine times, I'm just gonna bring you up the moon that I've created. Here it is after I pulled that saturation out. You can see some of the reds and the blues in here, the natural mineral colors of the moon. I saved it as a TIFF file. You wanna make sure you save it as a TIFF file because you're not gonna have any loss of quality in that. So TIFF files are important. If you make it a JPEG, you start to lose some of the, the detail that this should have. So a TIFF file, you're not losing any of the detail. Here's what the moon looks like. I'm now gonna take this moon, bring it up over into Lightroom. A little bit of editing with the sharpness and maybe some noise reduction, we'll see. And here is our moon in Lightroom. I'm gonna go ahead down here and bring up the sharpening quite a bit. I'm gonna probably go 20, let's go 25. It's more than I normally would do, but I like how it kind of brings in some of this detail here. Then I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to start messing with some of this. I want to bring the exposure down just a touch. Right about there looks good to me. I am going to go ahead and bring up some of the shadows. Nope, take down the shadows a bit. Take the highlights, move them around a little bit. You're just gonna basically work with these sliders to get what it is that you want to see out of your moon. I like it right there. I think this is ready to go. I'm gonna save it. Let's go ahead. Now let's take a look at the final moon that we've created by taking 21 images, stacking them together, bringing them into uh, Lightroom, and then adjusting some of the, the vibrance, a little bit of the sharpness. Here's our final moon. This is a moon you can all create with the cameras you've got using these techniques that I've just shown you on Lightroom and Photoshop. Hey, thanks for coming with me. Let's take a look at the moon.